are we through yet? How many reasons do we need to feel eternally secure? It's a battle. So get these reasons, as many as you can understand and study, under your belt. When somebody starts throwing rocks at your faith, you say, well, what about point 45? What, what, what point 45? You mean 44 points? Yes. Those who have expressed a moment of faith and have been permanently justified, declared righteous unto eternal life by God, at that instant begin to have a permanent, forever, position of eternal peace with God, never again to be subject to his eternal wrath. If you have eternal peace with him, obviously, you have security of your eternal life. Romans 5.1, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. In view are those who have expressed a moment of faith in what Abraham believed, the gospel, as Paul led up to in chapter 4 of Romans into chapter 5, and thus have been justified unto eternal life, because he says, therefore, remember the therefore? What came before therefore? Chapter 4, see? So in view of those who have expressed a moment of faith in what Abraham believed, the gospel, and thus have been justified unto eternal life by God, as a completed, permanent, passive action, once exercised, the faith is not stipulated as having to continue. It should continue, yes, for eternal rewards, and show gratitude out of your salvation, but it doesn't have to if, in order to secure eternal life. It should continue, but no longer needs to be expressed to remain justified, because that's a permanent thing, completed action. Hence, human doing is not required at any time to justify or get eternal life. One simply expresses a moment of trust in God to do it all, and at that moment, it's a completed action by God in you <clears throat> in so many ways. We've got, what, 40-some-odd now? Having been justified, <coughs> declared righteous by God, then by faith, peace we have toward God through the Lord Jesus the Lord our Jesus Christ. That's the Greek. Pretty much make your own sentence out of that. Try it. There's the Greek. Having been justified, then, so therefore, then, by faith, ek, out of, pistos, pistos, and so on. So you can read your interlinear and then see if it's better translated in another version. I use seven versions. So, having been justified, the word there I don't want to pronounce it. It's a nominative participle, participle acting as a noun, literally, ones who have been justified, declared righteous by God. It is in the aorist tense. I thought it was perfect, but uh, having been could be aorist. Or, uh, it's a be best translated in the aorist, uh, having been justified, signifying a completed action in the past, a moment's time. It is also in the passive voice, indicating that who did it, that the individual who has been justified did not participate, not us. In any way to receive that position, we received it because of what God's action. He's the active, we're the passive. Hence, God has performed this finished forever action of justification on the individual who simply believed in one moment's time. The individual simply trusted in God to do it all for him. You don't need to add to it later or even verify it, although it would be a good thing because what do you get? You verify your salvation by your good works. You get eternal rewards. You get to stay on earth. You full like the new years, and don't get uh, disciplined. So the context of verses 4, 18 to 25 continues into chapter 5, Romans. We have in view those who have expressed a moment of faith in what Abraham believed, the gospel, 4, 18 to 25, and thus have been justified unto eternal life by God as a completed, permanent, passive action. He did all the work. It's done. Don't mess with it. Once exercised, the faith is not stipulated as having to continue. It should continue, but it no longer needs to be expressed to remain justified. Hence, human doing is not required at any time. Can you be sure of that? Because, yes, if you're not involved in it, God being perfect and absolute, certainly he will deliver it, and you don't have to worry about your salvation. One simply expresses a moment of trust in God to do it all. William R. Newell states, we must note at once that the Greek form of this verb, declared righteous or justified, is not the present participle being declared righteous to imply ongoing activity of your own required, but rather the aorist participle, having been declared righteous or justified. It's a done deal. Or more specifically, the nominative form of the aorist participle, ones who have been declared righteous once for all time. So you say, what is the difference? The answer is being declared righteous looks 
to a state you are in, having been declared righteous. Justified looks back to a fact that happened. Being in a justified state, of course, is incorrect, confusing as it does justification and sanctification. Whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. The moment you believe, God declared you righteous, never to change his mind. That's your eternally secure study that I've done, and there are probably some more. I'm sure he's, oh no, not another one. Well, this is enough. Get in your own mind a number of these numbers, passages, and to be able to explain it to other people. They'll walk away probably mortified that you took away their uh, doubt that they have salvation and gave them assurance.